<laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm joined by Tyler as usual. How you doing, Tyler? Doing good, doing good. That is good. I hear that you tried to install Gen 2 again. Tell us about your week in Linux. Um, I was convinced to try Gen 2, and it it it's not that it didn't go well, because I got it installed, I got further, but Gen 2 is just I've decided it's definitely not for me. It was, there were circular dependency issues, and then when I fixed those, there was countless other issues that I ran into um, when it comes to just it, managing a Gentoo install is just, it, it's a lot of work, and I prefer to just have stuff installed and then mess around with the, I don't know, like graphical stuff, like my window manager and terminals stuff like that i i don't know so i d d bailed on gentoo and then i installed multiple different other distros trying i even tried fsf approved distros just just to heck, give it a shot try it out i knew wi-fi wasn't going to work but you know right a thing but uh yeah in the end i came back to arch and it works i was able to get it installed like rushed before the podcast <laughs> now i'm just gonna I, I the new thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do uh, a full month in just using suckless software and see how that goes ho ho hopefully i end up really like i already do like most suckless software the only thing i'm iffy on is the surf browser uh yeah surf is horrible it's not good at all <laughs> um because it's slow man it is slow I know that. And it gets slower as you add patches. So it's like it starts off slow and then it gets worse. Uh, I didn't I didn't use it for very long. Q browser is just way better. I mean, it's miles and head better. Even though it's written in Python and everybody's like, oh, I don't want it to learn to be written in Python, but it's way faster. Um, yeah. So have, would you consider using a Gen 2 based distro, something like Calculate Linux, to try that? Because that that's what I've decided I'm going to do. Because, I mean, everybody, you're right. There, there's some kind of disease on the internet where there's it's infected like half of my subscribers. Apparently, they all want me to try Gen 2. So uh, I'm going to compromise and install Calculate Linux eventually. I'm going to do a video on it. But hopefully, I mean, everybody says that's not Gen 2, but I'm going to give it a try. For for me, the only reason I don't try Calculate or anything like that is because, for me, the reason I would go to Gen 2 is because by the end of having everything set up and installed, it's everything is compiled specifically for my system and made specifically for it, and I only have the stuff that I want. That would be great, but uh, Calculate, I'm, I'm going to pick a desktop environment that I don't want and then go through there and have to do all the customization anyway, so... I don't know. In my head, I guess might as well just dive headfirst into Gen two, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. Oh. Well. Um. Okay. So for my week in Linux, I don't even remember. <laughs> this has been the longest week in the history of weeks. Uh. So I finished my DWM rice. Kinda ish. I I I still have. I'm not happy with the Vim theme. Uh, I'm going to continue to tweak that. Uh, and I still have to do Rofi. But other than that, that's basically what I've been doing in terms of actually doing stuff on Linux this week. Uh, all the rest of it has just been a shit ton of work. I mean, recording videos early, which has been good, but then actual, you know, career work that has gone uh, not so great this week just because LibreOffice has been messing up because it's you know trash mm -hmm. uh <laughs> and I, I have a note in here I, I got my rice done just in time for me to actually switch window managers because i've been kind of itching to switch to, to a different window manager uh, i have sway installed so i'm going to be doing a sway video for monday uh, i don't know whether or not that's going to be a how to install video or a, a rising video yet i haven't decided probably a rising video because it's already installed um but the only question I have about that is whether or not I'm going to get OBS working out in it or not, because it's way. I'm, re I'm really interested to see like whether or not you have high opinions of Sway. <laughs> it, okay, so I'll talk about this more in the video, but it's the stupidest thing. 
when you run xrander in a in a like anything you do you just run xrander it'll actually list out the displays you have connected right mm -hmm. and if i'm in here in dwm and i run xrander i have two displays i have display port dash one and i have hdmi dash a dash one mm -hmm. uh but of course xrander doesn't exist in sway because it's wayland right that yeah. you know, so they have an alternative you know that you can run and it will list your displays the display names are different it's so stupid because all right so because you don't have you know xorg or you can't use like a rander or any of that stuff you have to put in your configuration file where the displays are and you have to put the position and stuff like that it's managed like herpsloft wm does their displays and stuff where you have to list it in the configuration files and i had Super to fun right it's not i mean it's not horrible but you know I, I couldn't get it to work and i was i, I tried for like half an hour with these display names because i looked up the display names beforehand and it just would not work and that's because I was using the display names that are as they're listed under, you know, Xorg, and not in Sway. The the the, the display names for the display port is DP-2, and the 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 name for the HDMI one is HDMI-2-A or something like that. Like, why does it change? Like, the the the, the name should stay the same. You'd think, right? I mean, at least the name should I mean, stay the same. Yeah, you'd think so, but. I guess Wayland is just using their own own naming scheme. <laughs> it's just so weird. Um, I eventually did get it figured out and finally got the dis the 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 um the monitors where they need to be, like side by side in the right order. Uh, it, it's not hard. There's good instructions. It, it was just uh, if you use end up using Sway, just go through and run their version of Xrander in the terminal so you can actually see what the names are because I'm going to guarantee you the. Uh, the names are going to be different for everybody. I mean, it's just it's just so weird. I mean, it's just the weird the weirdest thing. Other than that, it's like basically identical to uh, a, a stock i3 install. Only the the only difference is the bars at the top. And apparently, you put any of the modules you want to put in are kind of done like you do in DWM, where you create like an X set root uh, script oh, or whatever, okay. and it's done there. It's um, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting video. I don't understand why though <laughs> that's gonna be my conclusion like i don't understand why what i mean i understand wayland is the future but is this the future i mean <laughs> like, like this doesn't feel like the future xorg still seems perfectly fine to me and things work yeah uh until i like i they had there's a there's a window manager call i think it's called river and see that doesn't have an xorg version that's just wayland uh, that makes sense to me. Like a window manager that just exists for for Wayland, Sway doesn't make sense to me because it's just i3. Why then don't you just use i3? It doesn't make any sense to me. So that that's that's gonna be something I'm gonna explore because I wanna. The only thing so far that it's added is a pain in the ass of trying to get the displays to work. You know, it hasn't added anything that i3 doesn't already have, other than it uses Wayland, and Wayland itself doesn't actually prevent presents you anything as of right now. Yeah. that xorg doesn't um and, and in fact it actually causes you problems because it's you know still in you know early development so it's it's a weird it's a, it's a weird time to be alive because you know we have this thing and we've had wayland being promised to us since like i don't know what 2013 2014 or something like that it's been in development for a long time uh and it's still not here yet i mean it's it's closer to being here than it's ever been before but it's not here mm -hmm. yet and they're, they're going to have to convince me. They're going to have to do some really good convincing to me to tell, to ha show me why I need to switch away from an Xorg, you know, window manager like DWM to something like Sway. Uh, and you, you'll notice that the Suckless guys really haven't even attempted to oh, yeah. go through and look at Wayland yet. Now, I know there's a fork. Someone's going to... Uh, in the comments below, say, "Well, there's a fork at DWM for Wayland. I don't even know if it's still developed. Like it's been, it's like three or four years old at this point. I don't know if it's still being developed. And again, I ask you why. I mean, it'd be uh, it's just, it'd be different if you're just developing new things on top of Wayland to take advantage of awesome features. But no one, at least so far, has been able to explain what those awesome features are yet. So, yeah." 
on that note, contact information. You can you can get in contact with us in many different ways. Uh, uh, apparently, I doxed myself on Discord in my last video. So if you want to get in contact with me on Discord, go watch my last video. Uh, somebody, met, I got oh, I got up at like three o'clock this morning, and I got a message in Discord from somebody who watched that video. So, <coughs> excuse me, it's not a big deal. Uh, if I ever created a Discord for the, my channel, you would have gotten contact with me that there anyways. It doesn't matter. Anyways, mm -hmm. at the Linux Cast on Twitter, you can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the Linuxcast.org. There's still not a website. There'll be a website eventually. I'll get there eventually. I, I promise every week. Uh, I don't work on it every week like at all. It's been on my to-do list for ages. It's not gonna do it's not gonna happen anytime soon, eventually. Uh, you can contact us via email, email at the Linuxcast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast. Uh, Thanks to all of our patrons. I'll thank you by name at the end. You can follow Tyler, who goes by Zany, on the internet on Odyssey and YouTube. Both of those links will be in the video description. Uh, I'd list those out, but those URLs are fugly as fuck. So that'd be fucking ugly as fuck. Um, uh, you can also subscribe to you, you can also subscribe you can also subscribe to the YouTube our YouTube channel at youtubecom linuxcast. Uh, I think that's everything. So, each and every week, Tyler and I go through and we scour the interwebs for one news link each. And usually, it, it spawn... <laughs> there is... Okay, so, before we jump into this, just... just I mean, just... There is... there is The, the GNOME developer released a blog post this week talking about why they don't have a ton of features in GNOME. I so wanted to pick that one. But we've talked about GNOME and bitched about GNOME two weeks in a row. So, I didn't do that one. So, but anyways, we, we choose a news link. Tyler, why don't you tell us what your news link is this week? Mine is Microsoft just essentially blew up or the title of it is Microsoft just blew up the only reason you can't uh, use a Linux desktop can't use a Linux desktop I think it's great because Microsoft ha has announced that they're releasing uh, with the release of Windows 365 and Cloud PC which is essentially just going to be a Windows I guess virtual machine or something that you can connect to through your browser and run any Microsoft program that you need to, which I know, I know my sister has to use like, uh, I think it's called word three, six, five or whatever, where you use the Microsoft office suite in the browser and her school like requires her that she uses that one. Cause they can spy on her and like essentially make sure that she's not cheating through it. Mm -hmm. um, and now, I don't see this as a big good thing for Linux in, in general at all. I don't I don't see many Linux users being like, oh, yes, this is amazing. But I feel like for the few people out there who have a specific Microsoft app that they're required to use that's not already web, webinized. <laughs> official, it's, it's definitely an official word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so when I saw this, I was like, you know, what? it'd be cool because maybe it's kind of like xCloud where you could, if it gives you power over having how much GPU power you have, you could maybe run some games in there. But it doesn't. It doesn't. It's, they all use the same probably integrated graphics or something. Yeah. Um, and you don't know how expensive it is because this is going to be for businesses only. So it's not as if, if it's going to go through and change the average Linux user's thing. But, I, you know, what I was thinking... If this was like, if there was like a free version of this that we could actually, you know, use, I'd use it every once in a while because I have got this brand new webcam and I need to update the firmware. And of course, you can only oh. update the firmware on on Windows. And I don't have, I have exactly one Windows PC in this entire house, and it's used by a, a family member. And I, <laughs> I can't get that away from her, so I'm not going to be able to do it from there. So I'm either going to have to install Windows or take my chances on installing it through Wine, which is not going to go well. <laughs> like, I downloaded the .exe, but apparently I don't even have Wine installed on this computer. So, uh, the, like, I don't... Trying to jump through the hoops and try and get it to work. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're talking about trying to date a device. Yeah, I know. Think through Wine. Ooh. I know. Yeah, so that, that's why I was thinking, like, you know, if, if this Windows 365 thing, would, that would work. I don't know if that would even work. You'd have to pass through the device somehow. But again, it's not something I'd pay for. I mean, that's literally something I'd use maybe once a year. Um, yeah. 
So I don't I'm know. thinking, I'm thinking when it, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but I, I think the the benefit could be is in the enterprise space. Mm-hmm. There could very it it makes a lot of sense for a company to be like, well, we can just use Linux on all of our machines, and that will keep them from aging, keep them from lasting longer, so we don't have to make another investment. And if all of our employees can use the same apps that they're used to using, just now we have to tell them, just make sure you're in the browser. Like, I mean, they, they, most employees know how to open Chrome. They probably do it for work. If not for work, they do it to browse Reddit, Reddit when, you know, the manager is not watching. So, yeah, or that, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. so, I mean, I, I think it wouldn't be that, I don't think it's that hard of a stretch to say that for enterprise, this could be very beneficial. Uh, yeah. Okay. I can, s- I can see that. I, I was going to completely disagree with you until you talked about getting the machines to last longer. That's that's a very good point. Um, but it's not going to save them any money. So we've talked about this before. The, right. the, the golden rule of corporations is they're in for to make money. They're still going to have to buy a PC license. And unless this is a significantly cheaper than just buying a Windows license, they're not going to change. Um, You're right. So now, if this was free, and, and they could install Linux on it, and that, then they'd save a ton of money. Uh, I could see this, or if the, if Microsoft offered this for a significant discount over actually buying an on-premise license, again, that is something that I could see working. But unless it significantly saves them money, the vast majority of people aren't, or vast majority of companies are just going to continue to use Windows Seven like they're. We we're going to plan on doing anyways, right? Yeah. Uh, so, um, well, the way I the way I was thinking about it is, I mean, again, this is completely speculative because we don't know the pricing on it. But if it's say to get the service for, because again, it's focused more towards enterprise, it would make sense that like the license for it is something. Let's just say like a hundred bucks a year for you know a hundred devices. Just throw it out there, a hundred bucks a year. I don't like. Tell me if I'm wrong here, but I think that might actually be cheaper than in three years upgrading every PCs like with an OEM license or something. Well, like see the way the way enterprise businesses work by licenses, they don't pay for the upgrade; they pay per year per for a subscription. So, oh, okay, right. So it, it's a per seat subscription for every license that they have, and um or. So where they're going to look at is is is, is this subscri- is this Windows 365 subscription going to be cheaper than the subscription we already have? If if those numbers add up, then they'd switch to this. But then they'd also have to look into how much are they going to have to train people to install? Because I mean they're still going to have to have some kind of operating system on their computers, whether that's Linux or Windows, or, you know, whatever. So if they move to Linux on their bo- on their you know actual boxes. Uh, you know, then they're going to have to have IT staff that are trained to use Linux because I used to work in IT, and the I'm I, I'm going to tell you right now, most IT people are idiots. Uh, mm-hmm. They're very much trained. I mean, I'm sorry, all you IT guys out there, but it's very much true. Y- you get your search in something specific, right? You, you know your search. You know you're very smart when it comes to network management, or you're very smart when it comes to uh w- you know whatever whatever certs you have you know those things but if you haven't gotten certified in something like that you i mean maybe you know some stuff but you're not going to be as trained up as the business is going to require you to be on those things that you're not certified to actually manage so uh and i was very much the same this was before i it was right out of college and you know i was a windows guy so i got certified in windows and network plus and you know all this stuff that you know you need to be but i had no clue how to uh, like i didn't i mean i'd used linux like one time until like 2002 and it was open susa i I've, I've told that story before uh, i had no clue about linux on the server none whatsoever and they didn't want me touching those boxes because i didn't i mean <laughs> and like i had no clue what i was doing so um and and, and that, that's just in my experience so uh in, in this case if they move to linux on boxes 
they'd have to have Linux certified people in order to do that, and that means training people to do that. Um, now, obviously, as we know, unless they're installing Gentoo, it's not hard. Um, yeah. But it's still, it's true. it's going to be something. Plus, they're going to have to worry about also interacting with in-person or in-place, on-site, on uh, like servers and stuff like that because that stuff's still going to be interacting between those clients and the servers so if they're uh moved to linux they're going to have to deal with a whole different way of interacting between linux boxes and windows servers because i mean well people still use servers on you know using windows so it's going to be a whole thing is that, that means there's this layer upon layer of actually training people and put you know it's all again all about money so yep. um I don't. I don't see, in terms of enterprise use, this changing much of anything because they're notoriously not going to want to spend money. Now, mm -hmm. the question becomes as if the, this becomes available in the consumer market because then it becomes a little bit more interesting. Again, it, it's going to depend on the cost. It's going to depend on what you get because if uh, you don't have access, because uh, the like I said before, what I was really interested in to see is if this offered you could, like say you could get a box like a, a server or whatever running Windows 10 just from Microsoft for a subscription fee that has a like a you know a core i7 and uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM and you know an SSD and a GTX 1060 or something you know let's let's yeah, install Fortnite on that bitch I want to you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so yep. uh, but from what I saw you only get to choose the specifications of like the the CPU the RAM and the storage size you don't get any access to anything in terms of gpu which is disappointing for me uh, i think that's disappointing for a lot of people because it would have made this a half decent service like, yeah for for regular people yeah i mean all right can we just i mean let's move on for, for, for just a second let's talk about something i don't know about you but i am subscription fatigued <laughs> like, like, all right. So, I, you know, I got Spotify, I got Disney Plus, I got you know all these different services that I have to pay for every single month. And for crying out loud, like, when you subscribe to like Disney Plus or whatever, like, oh, it's like seven ninety nine. That doesn't sound like much, but then you also have to you have twelve of those things that are seven ninety nine, and that adds up to a lot of money over time. Yep. Like, uh, for a subscription service for an enterprise makes tons of sense, but for uh for consumers <laughs> i'm just so sick and tired of subscription services i miss the days where i could just go out and buy a piece of software you know yeah i i've done it's it's taken a lot of work to get down to where i'm at essentially well not just me because i the problem with subscription services is they don't just affect you like normally they creep into your life because you have family too mm -hmm. because of family plans so you end up just amassing a ton of un unnecessary subscription services. We finally cut it down here to where we just have Netflix. And I think we also have like Prime Video, but or, or whatever that's called, but it's only because my sister has Prime. So yeah. we cut it down to two, like we don't even have Spotify anymore. I've cut down, like I don't have YouTube Premium or anything like that anymore. Like, Subscription services are they they are handy for stuff like I don't know like Netflix is really nice but also at the same time when you have 14 different Netflix like subscriptions mm -hmm. for everything that you do in your life like, and all of, all of a sudden you're paying you know the price the same price as rent on subscription services exactly. yeah. well it, it, it's funny because for years we bitched and complained about the cable TV bundle right like we, we like why the hell am I paying for the Hallmark channel nobody need nobody watches Hallmark why the hell am I paying for the boxing channel like I'm never gonna watch boxing I don't need that channel so wouldn't it be nice if I could just say well, I want to pay for this channel and I want to pay for this channel well they gave us exactly what we want now we're paying for this channel and this channel but what they didn't tell us what they were going to charge us 15 dollars for fucking channel mm -hmm. well, so. and it, it's that but then also people are well not just people all of us in general easily get into the habit of starting to watch one thing that's somewhere else and then before you know it you've been paying 11 months like for us hulu we paid 10 months of hulu we watched hulu zero times throughout that 10 months so all right so i do another podcast it's called the three cast and we've been doing it now since 2009 
-hmm. And it's transitioned over the years to different things. We started off with technology and stuff, but for the last five or six years, we just review movies. We just it's just three guys. Nobody watches this damn thing. And there's like we have like five views for for every episode. It's like dumb. Uh, but we have fun. It's just a, a few friends. We, we watch a movie each a couple every other week or something like that. Um, and for the last one, uh, you know, we take turns choosing the movie. And my my friend Ricky, he picked a movie called Raya and the Last Dragon, and it's on Disney Plus. And normally I just go, hey, Pirate Bay, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna download thing, but I couldn't find it on Pirate Bay in any good quality. So uh, you know, I, I like fuck it. I'm just gonna subscribe to Disney Plus. It'll be for a month, but I know for a fact that five months from now I'm still gonna be paying for Disney Plus, and I won't have yep. visited it one time. Now I did. Now back in like uh, January or something like that, we reviewed Hamilton, and um, I did remember to cancel at that time. So uh, now I know that. Uh, if I can remember to cancel it for this month and just pay for it this month, it's not going to be bad. Um, and then I won't have to subscribe to it again until the first of Jackson stuff comes out. So, um, let's see. That's 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 where subscriptions get you, and they know it too. Is you'll subscribe because you want to watch one thing, and then you'll just forget about it. Well, yeah, well, then you'll you'll remember to. Like, like, you won't remember to cancel it until they've charged you again. Like, I, like this month I was going to cancel Spotify, but I didn't remember until the day after they charged me. So I was like, going on, I'm going to put a note on, I'm going to I'm gonna go through and, and do it next week. But I won't remember to, 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 to cancel it until the day after they've charged me for the next month. So, um, it, 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 it's that's done. How I kept, that's how I kept YouTube Premium for so long. I was, I'd be like, oh yeah, I've got to cancel that and then check. I'm like, oh, I've already paid for it. Might as well just keep on. Okay. It might as well keep it for the next month. You know, even though we sh what we should do is cancel it right then because you actually still get that month. Like they're not exactly. going to stop giving you the service. It just won't charge you again. Um, I still but didn't do that. Doesn't so. think that way. <laughs> no, no, no. It's like no, no. You see, you think if you cancel it, that means your service gets turned off. Because I mean, that's the way it works with like, like if you call your cable company and cancel your service, they're gonna shut you off right away. You don't just get to keep using it for the month. All right, <laughs> that was zooming off topic completely. <laughs> I mean, uh, so true. All right. So, so what was your your article? <laughs> All right, so my news of the week was that Linux Mint 20.2 is now available with new features and tools. And the big news on this one that I think has kind of gotten shoved under the radar a little bit is because we talked about this a few months ago when Linux Mint decided they were going to try to push people to update more frequently, right? Um, and I'm actually on the wrong... This is the thing. Yeah, I was showing you. Um, <laughs> uh, it's got to go over the right thing. But anyways, um, so they're, they're going through and they've created a mechanism to remind people to upgrade and uh, supposedly it's not as bad as um they thought it was going to be it's not as as naggy as people thought it was going to be but it still exists so uh, I, I haven't tried linux mint 20.02 yet i don't know that if i even will because honestly at this point linux mint Get off the LTS, man. You're, you're very boring. <laughs> like, the LTS was so last year. <laughs> like, I understand that. I understand it's supposed to be stable and stuff like that. But, but there's a reason why I use Arch, because I think the LTS is boring. So Well, that and I actually... Th now, this doesn't directly relate to this, but it is sort of Linux minty in the fact that just stuff doesn't change. But can we talk about the fact that stable distributions typically... At least in my experience, I've had more issues with stable distributions using older Linux kernels uh, than I have with something like Arch. Like the amount of problems I've had with Arch when I install or update and something breaking, honestly, it's maybe happened to me once the entire time I've used it. But the amount of times I've tried to install something, not rolling, rolling release, something like Debian, um, Linux Mint or anything and running into issues because the LTS kernel doesn't support something so like if my computer goes to sleep it's completely broken or whatever like have you had more issues with that I haven't but I think it's mostly because well at least on this computer I, I, I haven't because I, I don't use LTS stuff on this but on my older computer I haven't found that but I think it's I think the LTS stuff is better for older computers if you're running newer hardware the LTS kernel is just not for you. Even if your even if your hardware is still just a couple years old, your the LTS kernels from I mean it's from like February of last yearish I think. Mm -hmm. So I mean even if your your hardware was like a year old, it's really it's really 
it's not as going to be as well supported in that LTS is something that's more cutting edge. So um, the LTS is real, the kernel is going to be much more for uh, you know the older hardware, and it's the same thing. For, I'm, now, like I know, I don't think that the like the the Ubuntu LTS actually uses the LTS kernel. I think it uses like five dot. Um, I think it actually might be on five dollar eleven or something like that. I don't even know. Um, so I is installed Ubuntu. I should know this. I think it uses. I think it almost uses an eleven kernel. I think it's like five dot ten dot like four five or something like that. Yeah, like, I I don't I don't remember. Um, and, and they go through and they backport the kernel into the LTS. Uh, at least Ubuntu does. I don't know if Linux Mint does or not. Not. Um, as, like I said, I don't know. The, the problems thing is just probably because uh, your computer doesn't like those distros or something. I don't know. Um, I, 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 so I've got new hardware, so. Yeah. The, the one, what, what's hilarious is that when I first switched to Linux after I got off from Solus, I moved to uh, like Ubuntu Mate, and I loved Mate for the longest time, but for whatever reason, this computer here will not run anything with Mate on it. I don't know why Mate just completely freezes, and it doesn't matter what distro I'm on. If I'm on Ubuntu, Linux Mint, uh, uh, Arch, like, Mate just completely crashes. I don't know why. And it's 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 obviously something to do with this computer because it, other people run Mate just perfectly fine. So, um, and you've got a thirty eight hundred X, right? Yeah, thirty eight hundred X and an RX five eighty. Yep. But, well, I mean, I don't have the same graphics card, but I've got the same processor. And I don't quite as have as much RAM as you do. <laughs> See, I, I I will say this. So the problems that I have sometimes very well could be this crappy RAM because this this RAM is off brand. It's like a Time Tech or something. It's like it's not the it's not it's not like bargain bin or whatever. But it's it, it, it's not what is it called Team? It's not Team Skeet, but like whatever it is, it's some Team. What is it? Team something branded RAM. Oh, they're so bad. I, I've had buddies and buy them cheap out because they're the cheaper type of RAM and have horrible problems with them. Team Elite, is that it? No, I have no idea. Yeah, it's called Time Tech is the one that I'm using. Um, and I got 64 gigabytes for like 280 bucks. It was like it was a good buy. Like I could get sixty four gigabytes for two eighty, or I could get thirty two gigabytes for two eighty. I was like, "We want sixty four gigabytes." Sounds like a good plan, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, also, that that wasn't that's not bad. Duck, duck, go. You actually found what I was talking about. Okay, uh, I don't even. That happens occasionally. It, yeah, it it's only when you like. I, so I was explaining it to a buddy when it comes to Duck, Duck, Go. I'm like, "Look, Duck, Duck, Go is a great, great search engine." Here's how you have to know how to use it, though. Right. You want to find something that is not detailed or um, like you're not looking for something discussionary, like a Reddit forum talking about it, forum post, when you're not looking for a discussion about what you're looking for, but maybe the Wikipedia page, blatant stuff that's just got the info there. DuckDuckGo will find it. It may not be at the very top, top result there might be something else there but it's definitely going to find a lot of what you're looking for once you start talking about forum posts or anything like that google just yeah g bang google it'll be there yeah just use your bang uh all right so we have done a fantastic job of not talking about anything we were supposed to talk about today <laughs> like i don't know if we got hyped up on sugar or something like that but our our attention's wandering all over the place so we didn't talk much about linux mint 5 or 20.2, it has the Cinnamon 5 desktop. Uh, I'm reading just from its floss. It doesn't actually go through and tell you what's new in Cinnamon 5. Um, it has the file renaming tool, which is just a, a the, the dumbest thing I've ever heard before. Wow. This is just so typical Linux, man. We talked about this before, but uh, like there are other file renaming tools. You don't have to spend your time developing a file renaming tool. Mm-hmm. Do something with your time that's better than that. Okay, Linux Mint, just... <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, hey, hey now. Hey now. They've spent time. They've got sticky notes looking fantastic. We all know everything that every Linux user, I mean, desktop user in general, needs is better sticky notes. Like, obviously. All right, so I'm curious. The, so Cinnamon uses the Kaha Kaja file manager, right? Mm-hmm. 
Is that a thing? Is it just me, or do I seem to remember that that's a fork of Thunar? I or did they, they, or did they go through and do that, you know, on their own? Because it doesn't actually say, as far as I know. I mean, it'd be dumb if it's not a full. If they went through and built that thing from the ground up, that's even dumber than I thought it would be. Because, <laughs> because uh, I mean, why? Um, I, I I suppose I could open up Google and actually find out. Uh, is I guess the core of the issue when it comes down to us and talking about Linux Mint is just they they're not doing anything innovative. It's just okay. So Taha is or however the hell the fuck you you say it is a fork of Nautilus from GNOME two. Okay, so um, I, that ma that makes me less angry about the file renaming tool because I w if this was a fork of Thunar it would be dumb because Thunar comes bundled with a file renaming tool like <laughs> all right, so it doesn't make as much uh, uh, as much problem so anyways um it doesn't it, again totally off topic <laughs> what is wrong with this this is wrong anyways it also comes up with the sticky notes replacing Gino uh because they wanted to go through and do their own sticky notes they decided that was a, a very good you know, use of their time, because Gino was... That's all what we've, we, everyone's <laughs> been asking for. Anytime I go on the internet, everyone's like, can we please get better sticky notes? Like, okay, so... Linux, uh, we, we, we talk about this every time. Linux has problems, right? I just made a video about file pickers, right? We have problems. Uh, you know, audio's been a problem for 30 years. Uh, you know, we're, we're in this pro transition to, to Wayland. Uh, Mint developers, you know, find yourself an actual problem and use your development skills on that. Okay, I, I know this is it, it's a it's a uh, it's very out there. It's an out there thought. You know, it's, it's definitely weird. But instead of spending, I mean, they probably didn't spend a lot of time making their own sticky notes app. It probably took them a couple hours. Uh, <laughs> it's a sticky notes app. Uh, I have no programming skills whatsoever, and I could probably do it. Um, uh, and you know how I do it? I just leave Gnode on there. You know, that's how I would do it. Or I would go into Gnode and do a search and replace and just call it something different. You know, just change the name. It's fine. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's how you do it. I mean, you don't have to do something from the ground up. It's, it, you're not, you're not going to find a way to make sticky notes uh, uh, new. <laughs> Look, it's going to be a sticky notes app. Oh, it's so dumb. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? <laughs> It is, we're 40 minutes into this thing. We haven't even started the main topic yet. We do this every week. Okay, so first of all, what even is the main topic? I don't even know what the main topic the is. The topic for this week is... Is um, telemetry okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is telemetry okay? I do... <laughs> do you uh, think telemetry is okay? Um, okay, so I'm going to surprise you on this. Uh, I think telemetry is okay. Uh, in certain going to be a butt. Yeah, in certain situations, telemetry is perfectly fine, as long as it's user aware and user opt in telemetry. I'm actually in in favor of it, actually, because I want my open source projects to be able to collect that information, uh, as long as I'm aware of it. Again, as long as I tell them it's okay, uh, so that they can actually make things better. You know, like I, there was a big brouhaha when Canonical and Ubuntu started to do this for Ubuntu. Uh, and uh, people like were freaking the fuck out for like ages about them putting in a, in the in, uh, the the welcome app or whatever. Can we send back some telemetry to canonical servers? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, like I didn't have a problem with that at all. Like, like I don't like Ubuntu, but I, I like the fact that they're able to have some information on how people to use their operating system so that they can make it bigger. But I only like it because they've given people an option to either turn it off or not you know, give it to them in the first place, you know? And it's right up front. It's not as if you have to remember in the back of your mind after you install Ubuntu to go shut that off. It's like in the welcome app, you know what I mean? So it's not, I don't have a problem with it. Like I said, as long as people know that it's there and it's easy to turn off and it's it's the, the off button is presented to you to begin with, you know? For, for me, I will go ahead and say this. I think it's, the only difference for me is I think opt-in is completely okay. But op, so for one, not an opt like just just telemetry. You don't have an option. Not okay. And then opt out for me is still unacceptable. Like opt out is still 
you're pushing the the limits. Like I don't, I think opt out would be okay if it's again, welcome screen first thing, or maybe even in the install. It's like, hey, are you okay with this? That's maybe okay, but I prefer just everything to be opt in because it, the opt in is essentially me walking up to you and asking, hey, would you be okay with sending me this stuff? Opt out is like, hey, I'm gonna take your shit, but if you're not okay with it, I won't. Yeah, it's like a it's like a friendly robbery, you know? Like, yeah, friendly stick up. I, I can agree. I can agree with that. I, I I don't mind opt out, like you said, as long as it's the off button is right there in front of you, like it's presented to you by default. Like every time, you know, you log in or for the first time, or it's in the like you said, it's in the installer. Then I'd be okay with with opt out, but it's not okay if it's put in like a, a, a sub menu inside the the you know whatever. If you have to go or through it, or it's on the user to remember. Yeah. You need to go into the settings. Because then it becomes your Hulu subscription. You're, you keep remembering. Well, like I think exactly. I really should turn that off, but I you know, I've forgotten. I'll do it next time I turn the computer on. Um. Yeah. So that'd be that's that'd be definitely be a problem. Um. The reason why I, I chose this topic was because the audacity thing has was going on when I typed this in and uh, uh, people freaked out like they, they, they like lost their minds over the the uh, the telemetry audacity was going to happen and it was for multiple reasons one it, it was opt in. Uh, and we had no clue how they were going to make it opt in. We didn't. I don't know if they were going to have like a splash screen. They, would, they said it was going to opt in, but they worry the way they went wrong was because that they were going to give the data to Google and Yandex, which is not great, right? It's not great at all. Um, so here's a question for you: We've already said that telemetry is okay in search circum certain circumstances. Does that your opinion on that change based on what company? Uh, what the company is going to do with the data. So, like, we, we, uh, you and I, we're not really Ubuntu fans, but we trust mm -hmm. Canonical with the data that they collect. Yeah. I mean, we don't expect them to take that data and sell it to Microsoft or uh, Google or Yandex or anything like that. They take that, but I mean, we trust them to do that. We don't know that they're not doing it. Um, mm -hmm. It's possible that they could be using Google Analytics to parse that data. It's, I mean, I don't think that they are, but it's possible. Good. Um, so the question is, do, does your opinion on telemetry change based on the company that is collecting it? It's a good question for me. No, because if I, the way that I look at it, if, if I opt in and I'm okay with sending a company, like, l let's say like canonical, my usage data so that it can benefit them for me, I'm already I, the illusion that no one has that data is already gone. So somebody mm. definitely has it. And Canonical, if if it helps them improve the product and helps them improve what they're doing, and it takes a lot of work off them to use something like Google Analytics, I'm fine with it. I, I honestly am. I could care less. The, the, the only thing that changes for me is when that if I opt in and give you that data and you tell me that you're going, that you, that you're going to take that data and use it for the benefit of the, of the software product, OS, whatever. And that is clearly not going to happen. That's when I have a problem with it because mm. you've essentially lied to get that data. And that's the problem with audacity is I, giving them that telemetry is not going to make audacity a better product it's well, going to help them monetize the product right that, and they don't need telemetry to improve audacity we all know what pro the problems with audacity are <laughs> like mm -hmm. all you have to do is open audacity you know exactly what the problem is exactly. it looks like it came from the 1980s that's that's the problem okay mm -hmm. audacity is the the audio processing behind audacity it's fantastic it's really really good but that ui is horrible you don't need my telemetry data to to know what's wrong with audacity yeah it, it's that's the problem it, it's like uh having a car that's been totaled you don't need to do a survey of the car to find out what's wrong with it it was in a head-on collision okay we know what's wrong all right yep. <laughs> i think i think that like really to be honest the 
the the only problem with telemetry for something not not in general for something like audacity but in this specific example of how muse group has done what they've done with audacity i think it's almost insulting the way they've gone about it because again they were like we we essentially need to they didn't word it like this but again paraphrasing we need your telemetry to make audacity better and that's just blatantly not true you right. don't need anything from from me and how i use it what operating system i'm running what's going on with audacity right. Uh, well, okay, okay. Even even though that's true, if if they just been you know honest about it, like we're just gonna collect to we're gonna collect telemetry to uh, begin to collect to have a data set of how the app is used in certain you know operating systems when it crashes and so on like that. You know, whatever. You know, we've already talked about how telemetry is okay, but it's they've been so shady about it right it's, it, it it feels like you're dealing with a mob boss where when you walk away you have to count your fingers afterwards <laughs> you know uh, it, it, they, they, uh, for whatever reason the people that they've ha they have running audacity just continually to make these changes to the their policies i mean let's face it, i mean they've had audacity now since like april or something like that, april or may they've done nothing <laughs> like I know, I know. Obviously, I understand a, a, a total UI refresh would take a long time, a couple years probably, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but in the few months that they've ma had the product, they've done nothing but piss people off. Like, mm -hmm. like if they'd come out, you know, it doesn't take anything. Like, hire somebody on Fiverr to do a UI refresh design. It doesn't need to be functional. Just say, you know what? We're gonna give you a hundred bucks. You know, kid in your in your mother's basement, redesign a, an audio unit based on you know on Audacity, but make it look modern. It would take them a few days, you know, whatever. And you know, they put this out there. You know, they they got this back from the Fiverr guy. They put it up on Reddit. This is what Audacity is going to look like when we can you know implement it. Like, this is what you have looking forward to. You know, and everybody like, whoa, this is going to be so awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, and then you know what? We're going to collect some telemetry. And people are gonna be like, you know what? It's okay if it's gonna look like that. I'm. I don't. You have my data here. You know. Here, here's my phone. You can have my data. Um. They didn't do that. No. Uh, we've got nothing. It, that's that's the, the thing. Like, I use an Android phone. I'm perfectly okay with Google collecting everything that they want to know about me. You wanna know why? Because I get something for it. You know what I mean? I, like all the data that they have. When I say you know, uh, move to the next song or play Breaking Benjamin on Spotify, they're using the data that they've collected from everybody to be able to do that. You know that is, uh, it, it still doesn't make your me. Your car breaks down, and you know you need someone to come pick you up. It's because of that spy device that you have that someone can come and save your ass. Yeah, there <laughs> is a benefit to it, but I. Well, I think I, it's where. Audacity really messes up is that if they could come out and be like, just give one reason of how like getting telemetry from users is going to benefit the product. Just one. I don't care what it is just to prevent. Like they could have just been like getting, getting usage data will help prevent the rare crashes that occur with Audacity. Like, Think about it. Have you had Audacity crash on you recently? No. OBS all the time. But, um... Exactly. Audacity <laughs> is one of those programs I've used on and off for a long time, and I haven't had it just crash. So, I mean, if they wanted to explain it, like, there are rare crashes where Audacity does just bite the dust, and we'd like to be able to fix it. Or, or, or we want to get it to work better on certain hardware. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna collect the performance data based on the hardware that you have, so that we can optimize future versions for certain hardware, but different Linux kernels, different Windows installs, whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean that that's exactly right. But I, I think even beyond that, if they just, I mean, just from a PR perspective, if they went through and say, you know, this is what we're working on, you know. It's gonna be awesome, you know. We're gonna put, we're gonna put, throw some money at the UI. We're gonna make this thing so cool. You're never gonna to want to look at Adobe products again, you know. Yeah. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, oh um, you, you know, all they, that's all they had to do. And then you know what? We're gonna click telemetry. Yes, they were, they would still have a problem with the Google Neandex stuff. 
but it wouldn't have been such a a, a, a shitstorm because people would have had something to look forward to. Right now, mm -hmm. all we know is Audacity still looks like Audacity has looked forever, uh, mm -hmm. and as far as we know, that's not going to change. All, all you've done. <laughs> I actually have an interesting question. Have you heard at all from Muse Group that they're working on a UI refresh? No. All we've heard from them is that they're going to collect data. Uh, and then they, um, what was the most recent one where they um, were going to, oh, there was the privacy policy where they could send all your data to Russia. And um, uh, if you're 13 years old, you can't use it anymore and all this stuff. So um, it w it's just been one uh it's it's been like watching a train wreck and it, it, it it's the it's funny part is is i have read an article that where they did an interview with i can't remember who it was from muse group but it was a higher up at muse group and they are working on a ui refresh that article in that interview is the only place on the internet that i have found muse group or any person from there referring to them working on a UI refresh. Yeah. Publicly, like, I, I honestly just want to say this is a company that doesn't understand how PR works at all. Because, well, yeah, I agree. Can you um, can you think of another company that's this bold <laughs> so, so bad? Like, well, I, I think so. Here's the thing: I think that they thought that nobody uses Audacity, and. I think they found that, that that that's not true. Like at all. Like a lot of people use Audacity. No, and that does not just Linux users. People use this on Windows. They use it on Mac, and, and you know, schools use it because it's free. You know, and I think they also thought that the open source part of it that people. I think they thought that people just used it because it was free. Uh, and I thought that I think that they thought that the open source part of it just didn't matter to people. And they found out how very wrong they were. You know, because the open source nature of Audacity is a big part of why Audacity is good. Um, it, but it's also, when you take over a, an open source pro project, you're also taking over the community that has supported it for years. And you can't just come into a community that size and, in, you know, and ban hammer all of your ideas. Uh, in your way of doing things, even though you technically own the project now, that's not the way open source works. You have to uh, yeah, assimilate into that group and run it that way and then slowly make changes because the open source communities are very uh, anti-change. Like, we don't want to be changed. And if you want to make a change, you have to do it from within, within the culture of open source. And they just said, no, they did not do that. They, they said, that basically, we own this. We're going to do whatever the hell we want with it. And that's just not, I mean, that's you're right. <laughs> it's just horrible, horrible PR. And, it, but it, and it's more than that. It's... It, it, it's just the way it feels because if it, it, in addition to be hor being horrible PR, it feels like they're uh, criminals. <laughs> you know, if it, it, like it, it feels shady AF, right? And uh, and that's not something that anybody really wants to be associated with. And it's, um, I mean, and people look at their other open source project, which is a Muse score or something like that. It's like it, that's open source too, but it doesn't have as big of a community as Audacity. It's not even close. And they just recently started charging like a, for back-end service that. And people are looking like, oh my goodness, that's what's going to happen to Audacity. Like, they're going to start charging for for Audacity. And I don't think that, I mean, if, if they'd handled this perfectly from the start, you know, showing people what they're going to do with it and stuff like that, and, you know, collected telemetry the right way. I mean, yeah, they would have still had people, you know, boohooing it, but, you know, whatever. Just every, if they'd done everything right, it's possible that they could, in, in a year or two, after they've made the changes that we've been asking for, like a UI refresh and you know whatever, they could have implemented some kind of service in the background, like a, a cloud service of some kind or whatever, I don't know, in order to monetize it. But right now, it just makes it look like eventually they're going to tack on some kind of monthly fee for to use Audacity. Mm -hmm. uh, with nothing, like, in, nothing in return. It's, it's not, a, it's not, it's not a good look. And no, it, yeah, it, right? it's a horrible look for a company. That's why I've thought it's it's been qu quite a funny spectacle to watch. It, 
I mean, not for the company and for the employees, but to see a company just magnificently ruin an investment, it's yeah, it's quite a. Sign. I, I I would say was it funny if it would if it didn't affect so many people like. Uh, the Freenode situation was hilarious because nobody uses Freenode, right? I mean, very few people use Freenode. Like that was utter, that was utter hilarity. We we sat back and had popcorn. It was awesome. The thing is with Audacity is like everybody uses Audacity. If they ruin Audacity, we're all screwed because um I I've went through the last couple of weeks trying to find an alternative to Audacity. They exist, but they're all horrible. Um, they're bad. I mean, somebody put pointing me towards ocean audio which they don't know how to spell their own name first of all but uh, uh i recorded a video in that and it sounded like i was in a like a, a, a cave with bats or something it was really it was really bad um now again probably my fault because i don't know how to use it but whatever uh i downloaded what was a Ad door something like that oh uh, yeah i've heard of that yeah. um that's like a professional like D daw right uh and it has so many buttons i looked at one took one look at that thing i was like i'm not smart enough to do that and i installed it <laughs> like i didn't even bother because there's a, it's just way too complicated so um anyways so i mean they're like there are alternatives but if audacity goes belly up i'm well i'm screwed because I, I even finding trying to fall and find alternatives i haven't had a good luck with it so yeah. And I mean, so far, so far from what I've heard, there's a fork of Audacity called Tenacity that is going to see quite a few develop uh, or quite a few developers yeah. focus their attention on it. Like I know, I know f the fork is going to happen, and and it has happened. It's like there's like four four of the uh, four big ones. I mean, it's been forked thousands of times, but there's been four big ones. Uh, one of them has been driven out of business already because they they were bullied by another one of the other forks, right? I, I, I heard about that. <laughs> like if you if you go into the thread of that when that guy said he was stepping away from the product, I mean he's like getting literal death threats from people. Mm -hmm. Um, and like first of all, not a good look for the, the open source community. People, calm the fuck down. Well, actually, so I do have a good question for you. So, because uh, I can't remember who I talked about this with. Uh, before this, but it's just an interesting question. Do you think that people or employees of Muse Group uh, are deliberately trying to do stuff like that to keep the more successful forks that are coming up to essentially just kill off their development enthusiasm by sending death threats or anonymous like mm. shit just their way? I don't think so but i really couldn't answer and i wouldn't really want to answer just in case you know for legal reasons i mean if i come on and said yeah they're definitely doing this you know um i'd probably hear from their lawyers um because this seems like a company that would sue people <laughs> just, yep. and this just seems like a company so so i probably shouldn't answer that but it wouldn't that's why i think it's an interesting question only because mu like it, it it's one of those things where you really want to be like Muse Group wouldn't do that. But then well, with how much shit they've done at this point, it's like, eh, maybe. This is going to come across as the most xenophobic thing you'll ever hear me say on the podcast. Um, but I'm going to say it anyways. There, If Muse Group was based in Great Britain, like solely Great Britain, we wouldn't be having any problems with it. Even if they were based in like Brazil or, you know... Um, south of africa or something we wouldn't be having a problem but because they're based in russia okay mm -hmm. there's this thing that, that maybe they're part of the russian mafia and they're out to get people mm -hmm. um <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it crossed my mind <laughs> well i mean we all know just how amazing the russian government is right i mean it, staying it, out of businesses it's and deals. so democratic over there right i mean yeah. it's just a pristine i mean and everybody loves their their president. He's got like 95, 96 percent of the percent of the vote. Not that I mean, he didn't. There's it's not going on there. It's not. Know. It's not as if he killed off or in jail his political opponents or anything. I mean, that's obviously not true. Um, and then I got a I got a comment on a, on a on a video. I think it was on yesterday's video. Somebody was like, "You're more worried about Putin than you are Biden's regime." I was like. Yeah, I'm more worried about Putin than Biden because you want to know what? We can get rid of Biden's ass if he starts pissing us off. We can, well, you know, we have elections and we have political opponents like Trump is still here. If Biden becomes bad, we'll just get Trump, Trumpy boy, come back. You know, <laughs> we have a political mechanism for this shit. Um, it's 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 weird. Okay. <laughs>
That was one of the best tangents we've ever had. <laughs> We're gonna get in so much trouble for this shit, man. Yes. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna put this out there. If you're from Russia and you're still listening, you didn't turn it off after that. Uh, first of all, thank you for still listening. Second of all, I have nothing against the Russian people. I feel, I mean, I, I, pity, I pity you because you're in Russia. First of all, snow. Fuck snow. I'm just saying... Uh, oh, come on, man. The weather there is fantastic. Uh, apparently, it was like it was like 96 degrees in Moscow like the other day. So, um, yeah, c climate change, not a thing, obviously. <laughs> uh, um, but anyway, but what I was just uh, what I was saying, like, if you're, 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 if you're Russian, you, li you live in Russia, um, you can put your snow boots on. But also, I love you, man. You, you're a woman. You, you guys are great. Uh, your president, piece of trash. Um, and, and next week, Tyler will be doing the, the podcast with someone else because obviously I'm going to die. <laughs> he's he's going to have me killed. <laughs> so <laughs> I was going to say, if you disappear next week, poop. I, I've you been, know, it's like the, the, the movie V for Vendetta, I'm going to be black bag, but um, they're going to, uh, I, I don't know if you realize this, but. I'm I'm a big guy, so they better bring some big people uh, to bring me along. I'm just gonna say, um, cause I ain't going lonely. <laughs> All right, <laughs> good lord. <laughs> what are we <laughs> talking about anymore? I don't even know. All right, I I, I think we better just stop there and move on to the picks of the week. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> We've been going for an hour and four minutes and we still have picks of the week to go. So <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. This is a good podcast. <laughs> yes, it's uh well I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> All right, Tyler. Every week you and I we come up with something like a, an app or a website or something of the week that we've been using that we think is awesome and we want to recommend to other people try out to. What is your pick of the week this week? Mine is a pretty simple um little app i believe it's uh, as far as i know it's for um ubuntu but i think it i think you can use it other places like um i think they also have just a plain old like gnome extension for like for it as well but um it's a simple program just to keep your screen from locking or um, pulling up the screensaver and i know there's other ways of doing doing what this program does but i thought it was really neat because my grandmother told me about it she goes yeah i just i found this little thing in the software center i applied it and she goes she goes now the dang thing doesn't doesn't like lock up when i walk away from it. that's adorable i know <laughs> so i had to add it because that's the first first app that i've ever had a family member find and it's like oh this is really nice and so th this isn't so much your pick of the week as it's granny's pick of the week no. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's cool um yeah i've used caffeine before but i've never really had a use for it lately because now it seems that mo for the most part this problem seems to have been fixed on most desktop environments uh where yeah, if you and also most of them have it where they have reasonable defaults now it's not like because uh, I can't remember what Ubuntu used to default to. I think it was like two or three minutes was yeah. block the screen time. See, I actually have my, now my biggest problem lately has been other, the the opposite where I can't for whatever reason get my computer to the screens to go to sleep. Like every once in a while, there's something in the background that just keeps it awake. Um, and usually it's Steam because like Steam will not let your computer go to sleep. Like for whatever yeah, reason, it just won't. Um, so, uh, and and the stupid thing about Steam is if you don't put it out the right way, it's up there in the tray, living yep. forever. And I don't have a tray, <laughs> so I have the problem with DWM. You won't notice stuff like that, like I mean, unless you got the tray patch. Like I'm pretty sure I have Dropbox running for no reason. Like I don't use Dropbox, but I'm pretty sure it's running. I have no clue if it actually is because I don't have a tray. All right, um, yeah, caffeine's awesome. All right, so. I normally go through and recommend an open source application. I usually try to do a FOSS application. This time I've picked one that's not open source. It's called Everdo. It's a to-do app, but it's more of like a project management app. It's really cool. And there's tons of stuff. And the free plan is amazing. Usually with like project management stuff that you, you don't get very much good stuff for free. Um, 
And with Everdo, you pretty much get the whole app for free. And then if you want to actually go through and get uh, like the pro features, you just have to pay for it. Like you pay for the software like 80 bucks and you own it. It's yours. Um, it's not a subscription service. Now they do have a subscription service if you want syncing. Uh, but that's just separate. That's like three dollars a year or something like that. Um, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, so if you get the pro features, you don't get syncing. But it, it, you don't really it, unless you absolutely need your project management service on multiple devices. Syncing is not a big deal. So I, I love the fact that they've taken that out. You know, because I, I don't really need that. It's just really cool. All the rest of the stuff. So they have subtasks and they have. Uh, neat ways of organizing stuff. They have shareable stuff between like uh, teams and stuff like that that you can en enable if you have uh, the syncing and you know if you pay for syncing. It's a native application for Linux. It is also available on Mac and uh, uh, Windows and Android and iOS. It's everywhere, and it's really good. It's really well designed, and even if you just use it just like for a, a straight up to do app, it's good. Uh, it's maybe a little overkill for for that kind of stuff. But if you do, uh, if if you're working on projects that have a whole bunch of subtasks and stuff, this is really great. And I found it's better than to do is simply because it offers more abilities to organize your stuff in terms of creating different projects and tags and stuff like that. It doesn't have to do is cool functionality of like. Um, Typing in, I'm going to do this next week on Tuesday, and then scheduling it for next week on Tuesday. It doesn't do that really cool, you know, like like that. But um, it does allow you to go through and do, you know, repeat, you know, repeat tasks. So you can schedule it for every day or at a certain time, and it'll do notifications and stuff. Like that. So it's really good uh, if if you need the power of it. If you're just doing a to-do app, it's probably a little bit overkill. But yeah, it's good. Uh, links for both of these and everything else we've talked about will be in the video description or in the show notes if you're listening to this in just the audio version. Um, before we go, I should go through and take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Manglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Chris, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks, everybody, for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week. See ya.